The first thing is the big topic here. Already people are talking about it. The new iPhone has come out. And whether you're an iPhone or Android, I don't care. Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to buy one of the, the latest and greatest, uh, the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It won't be out until sometime probably in November. And I can wait because there's so many additions there. But let me just say one or two things about whenever you buy any kind of a phone, even if you just upgrade to this year's model or, a, uh, or the year before the 10. And I'm going to go into settings and, uh, and just show you a couple things. You go to general in settings and it says about. And, and after you... Uh, you go down to about, you can see the name, you can see what, what it is. But here's one of the th important things is the capacity. Uh, I got 256 gigabytes. I still have 96 available, even though I have almost 14,000 images uh, in my phone. And I keep trashing duplicates and so forth, but uh, some things, and, and I have a lot of textures that I use. I don't worry about a white sky anymore because I can put textures in. But so two of the things you want to be concerned about, I would never buy any kind of a phone with the lowest amount, amount of memory. And then the second thing, which is important, to me it's important, um, is storage beyond that capacity that you could put in there, and that's the cloud. Uh, my wife has equivalent to about $2 a month, $1.99, to pay it once a year, and she has more than enough. I don't know how many thousand pictures she has, but she, uh, all of her grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and, and she's a quilter, and all of her quilts, and blah, 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 blah. And, but I have two terabyte of memory, so I'm not worried at all. But those two things, when you go to buy the next model of anything, is capacity and cloud. Um, because I have an iPhone, I have it set up that everything passes on to my iPad and also into the, my uh, Mac computer. But if you're a PC person, that doesn't make any difference. You can have it set up the same way. So that, that's one of the things to start out here. But, um, and I won't say too much more about it. We have some questions that you have about it. We can talk about it. But while I'm in settings, I want to show you some important things that I think will help you no matter what you do. And in, the, in settings, and by the way, when I say settings, I get out of settings here. That's that gearbox. If you're uh, kind of new to this, and that's where you go. I'll go to settings, and then I'm going to scroll down. And just keep scrolling until I come to music, camera. Now, this is where it really is important. This is record video. Formats. I'll start with formats. And either most compatible or high, high efficiency. Uh, Apple says that the, the new format is better. It takes up less storage from space and it's two bits higher than a, than a JPEG. And uh, right now I have the most compatible set. There's a couple of reasons for that. Um, and JPEG has been around for 20 some years and it still works. That's the way I have mindset. And, and, and do not fear of using most efficiency. Now record video. This is very important. I, I tap that and then it lists all the different things you can do here. I have mine set at 4K at 30 frames a second. If I'm going to do a lot of video, I may change it to 4K 4K, 4,000, at 60 frames a second. And down here, it explains everything. I would never go below 
1080 and 30 or 60 frames a second. Don't even consider going down to 720 and 30 frames a second. This is really important. Auto low light. Well, because I have the 11 Pro Max, I have a low light system. I use it all the time, not over in the evening, but also if I put a dark filter on. Why would I put a dark filter? Because I am doing infrared photography with my, my iPhone. And it's, uh, uh, you'll learn more about it. I'll show you uh, maybe an example of a friend. But I think it's very important that you, you consider the higher, the higher uh, possibility. Okay, let me go back here. And you see it's, it says record video, slow-mo. Slow motion, I don't use very much, but if I did, I would raise it to a higher, a higher standard. Um, it, it's kind of a fun thing, but it can be boring like watching grass grow, <laughs> you know, if, unless something is really moving. Record stereo sound, of course. Why not, if you can? Preserve the settings. I don't even go there. Um, use volume up for burst. I do not do that because sometimes when I push the, 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 the button, you can see my hands here, I move. And I prefer the regular button and, and the regular methods of doing that. Scan QR codes, why not? It's here, use it. But yes, for sure, the grid, the tic-tac-toe game, uh, rule of thirds, whatever you want to call it. It's just a reminder not to bird's eye everything. And sometimes it works, uh, especially in a square format. But for the most part, if you can have the, the something that is the main attraction near an intersection of those lines. I didn't say it had to be on, but near. Near front camera, I have that turned off. The outside the frame, turned off, don't need it. Uh, prioritize faster shooting, sure. Smart HDR. Now this is, uh, we all want HDR. We want to have the shadows, we can see the shadows and we want no burned out highlights. But I want to, choose when I have it on. That's, that's very important to me. And I'm telling you that, and I'll show you in a few minutes here, just why. Okay, let's go back to settings, and right above that is photos. And iCloud photos. Automatically upload and safe, safety store all your photos and videos in the cloud so you can browse, search, and share from any other device. Yes. Optimize iPhone storage. I have download and keep the originals. And this is very important because, you know, I hate to say it uh, to younger people, but uh, you know that the original is our negative. Um, and and, and uh, if we lose that, we can't go back and, and do anything. You could scroll up and on editing a photo, but if you got that original, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, shared albums, yes. Um, upload birth photo. Hidden album um, will appear in the albums tab. Leave it on. Cellular data. Um, I, I happen to have unlimited cellular data through Verizon, but that's the company that I chose because I go up to Door County, Wisconsin. And you cross the bridge of Sturgeon Bay and go into this little neat, unique little, um, well, it's like a peninsula sticking out into Lake Michigan. And um, it's a beautiful area up there, settled mostly by Scandinavians, a lot of Swedes up there. And, uh, but uh, AT&T just falls right off. It's just one of those crazy things. I'm in the middle of Yellowstone shooting. I, I can't see a tire any place. And I have good Wi-Fi pickup. So Verizon has been good for me. But that, you know, you, you use whatever you want to use, what's best for you folks. Um, 
show holiday events. I have that turned off because all of a sudden there's so many holidays I've never heard of and relate to, and I don't need that. Now, at the bottom, transfer to Mac or PC, automatic. So you can set this so it will transfer to your, to your, your PC as well as your, your Mac. Very important. Okay, now I'll get back to the, some of these settings because some of them are, are, are important and I'll show you in just a minute. Now, I wanna go, go and go into the, the, what I call the native camera, the resident camera. And I'm gonna move something up here because it's blocking my sight. Uh, you may not see some of the things that I see because I have the 11 Pro Max. I have the bolt of lightning on the left, you know, the line through it turned off. If you have it turned on, first of all, you, it, it stops the computer to work and you have a bright forefront and then a black background and the computer kind of stops working. I only turn it on when I need it, when something is sunlit from behind and I want to fill in a portrait or something with, with a little flash from under the chin and the eye sockets, turn it on. The next thing is the night, the night mood, and it's even getting better in the 12. It does work. Now, when it says night, it doesn't mean no light. You have to have some light. But that's okay. Now, over here, HDR turned off. When I want HDR, I just turn it on and then turn it off. The next thing, keep turned off, live photo. It's wonderful for people where you live in your beautiful gardens and the waterfalls. Oh, is it, it just, you can make that milky water and I'll show you some other things you can do with it. And it's got some cutesy things that I don't care to use, except maybe with a, a grandchild or a great grandchild or something, but, uh, but turn it off unless you want to use it. And there's all kinds of instructions Apple gives you if you need help. Now down here, it shows that I have three different. Um, right now I'm, I'm on the regular lens, which is a wide angle. And then number two is a two times uh, telephoto. And I have a moment lens. I'll talk about some of those things later where I can put another telephoto on top of this and have a four times instead of two times. The new 12 will have a longer lens, so it's better for bulk and so forth. And then the 0.5, this is a super wide angle, extreme wide angle. And it has great things for, for uh, places where you folks live, especially, and the mountains and, and so forth, and the hills, and, and uh, the, um, <laughs> all the water areas that you have. It, 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 it's still wonderful, and uh, but it doesn't always work in every situation, and I'll get to that also. So I'm just going to go back and leave it there. Now on mine, you can see on the top, there's a little carrot pointing up. If I take that carrot and go down below, you can see now I have controls down here, and I can, I can actually set it to square 16.9 panoramic. I leave mine at 4.3, that's the standard. Uh, but if you want to take for a whole series of, of panoramic 16 by nine, you can change it right there. And also we have a plus or minus, and then we have a, a self timer right there, which is, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and we have some of the, maybe the last picture that I shot or messed with. Now, do I ever use, let me turn this back, do I ever use the built-in editing that Apple gives you? Why, sure. Why not? Do I use it very much for everything? Of course not. Because it, everything is global. When I say global, it affects the whole picture where Snapseed and other applications like Retouch or Touch Retouch, whatever you want to call it, um, you can, you can zero in little areas, and we'll get into that later. 
External or hardware. Uh, do I use external hardware? Of course. Even tonight, I, I have um, a stylus. And sometimes when I work, I just turn it on. You can, you can charge it when needed. Um, it doesn't take much charging. But this is not like the Apple stylus. This is one for the iPhone or Android phones, whatever you want. And older iPads, older than the Pro. And it's very handy to get in little places if you're editing. Um, and uh, I, my notes will have where to buy it. It's now on sale for $19, not $100 like Apple. And, uh, but do I use it on my iPad Pro? No, because I have a, a very sensitive one there. Other things that I have, I have lenses that I can tack on. And you will not be able to see this very well, but I have on my case here, let's see where is it? it's really hard to see because it's black, but I have three lenses and I can take and put on the moment lenses are the only ones that I, I have that will use. Oh yes, Siri, thank you. <laughs> the Siri. But, um, I use the moment lenses and now I, am, I have some moment uh, filter holders that work. And there's another filter holder by Moondog Lab. I know it's a funny name, but Moondog Labs. And these are all for infrared. But also, you know, an interesting thing, and most of you are very young, and don't worry about this, but sometimes there's little tiny things down the ground, little mushrooms, little tiny wildflowers. And, you know, I can get down real easy. Darn it, getting back up is kind of hard. So I use selfie sticks. And most selfie sticks today come with a, a, a kind of a release, a Bluetooth uh, clicker. And so I can just reach down there, take that picture without getting down on the ground. And do I always use it? Well, no, sometimes I don't take it with me, but I have two or three selfie sticks and they're quite, they're quite handy. Another thing that uh, I'm doing now with, especially if I'm doing slow motion, long, long timing things. And, and I'll talk about what applications I use in just a minute. But I want to see water to be kind of just a, a ripple I may want to see clouds that streak. I may want to have um, a, a car that's driving on a mountain pass. You see the streak of the, of the lights. And so I will put this on to a tripod, director tripod. And I use a Me Photo. This is my notes, by the way. Sidekick, which is, I've had it for five or six years. And uh, it works beautifully, but there's a cheaper thing called Manfrotto that has one for $10. And uh, Rad Drew pointed that out to me just a couple of days ago. Um, some, other, some other things when I say that I, I have devices, um, being a mobile photographer, I wanna carry as little as possible. And when I say that, um, I don't I wouldn't be carrying a lot of stuff. Um, and I, I think this is one of the beauties of what we have here, that we don't have to carry all these things. And my program notes will show everything I do have. I don't, I share everything because people share with me. And, um, but I, I don't want to be carrying everything with me. And, and I have just a little tiny bag that doesn't look like a photo bag that I can whip out these little tools when I need it. One is a Hoodman Lube, and it's used for uh, our big boy, big girl cameras when we want to see the LED screen in the bright sun, so you can see the LED screen. Well, it fits over part, of, uh, most part of our LED screen here, and still room to take the picture, so you don't, in bright sun, cut somebody's head off or whatever. Sometimes you need it. Um, I, I know we have we, we avoid the bright sun, but you're at a good location, you're there, 
and your companions say, well, hurry up, hurry up, you know, uh, uh, well, no, I'm going to take the picture first. And no matter what kind of lighting condition, you'll take the picture. I, I, I know I will. Now, the, the, here's the next thing. Right now, I've got my elbow on the table. No problem. But holding this darn thing still is a problem. And it's, it's always going to be a problem. It's so light and so forth. And so here's what I do. You can see me put my hand against my other hand here a little bit. And I'm doing this so that I can rest my other hand in the palm and then touch and just gently touch. I, I know you can use the, the volume up and most people do it and go like this. You know, they're, they're, they're moving. You've got to hold this still to have good pictures. And some people, especially with infrared and using longer exposures, they're using the tripod. And um, I've learned from another person by the name of Jack Davis and DeWitt Jones, a former National Geographic photographer. There is now a website you can check out and it's called um, Open. It's, a, it's an open group and it's called for iPhone Infrared. Got that one? It's a brand new. You can see what people are doing, what they're sharing. Uh, there's some really good information there about whatever and so forth. It just started about a week ago. And I think there's already 243 people involved. So this is spreading like wild. Just, it's just spreading like incredible. So now you can, you can see that when I'm... I'm touching here, I, I, it doesn't care what fingers you put down, but just you touch and hold this together. Reaching far out, it's almost impossible, I don't care how strong you are, to hold it still. I know we do it sometimes. And here's another issue. It's a big issue. And it's a degradation of your image. Let's say that you don't have a telephoto lens on yours and you come down to the water's edge and there's that loon right there and you wanna get that picture, but it's too far away. And so you take your fingers and spread it apart and you start doing this. When I squeeze, I'm now going to the optical zoom. We don't want that optical zoom. And that's what I wanted this back. I, th I think uh, some other, some other uh, important things here is that when you, when you, uh, you take a picture, and, and I'm in the camera right now, and let me get out of that and just go to a photo, it's something besides infrared here, and um, uh, you see I've been doing a lot of infrared. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, when, we, when we look at a photo and we have, have the word up here, edit, is it okay to use those edits? Sure. It's, it's a shortcut, but the problem with only editing here is that whenever I edit, and I have all these options here, I have auto, which brought a little more brightness to the the ash tree out there. And then we have all these options, exposure, brilliance, highlights, shadows. And then we can adjust there and, and just contrast, brightness, black point, saturation, vibrance, warmth, tint, sharpness. Oh yeah, you can do that. Definition, noise reduction, vignette. But all of these all of these are global and affect the whole image. And as a photographer, you're not going to be satisfied. But if you want to tweak it, tweak it just a little bit. And then you go down here, down below, I moved a few things so I could hit done. And even if I just did one thing, I affected it. But that's where we're going to get into the software. And, and um, 
Um, all of the stuff I'm talking to you about will be in the speaker notes, which will be sent to you after the program tonight. And there's about 11 pages and it's some good stuff. And I, I keep trying to upgrade it. I probably have everything upgraded except infrared. It, that just happened so fast and I'm still working on it myself. But let me say that, that uh, organizing these images is another issue. And Apple gives you this, this thing that's free. And to me, it's so wonderful. Get, get out of here. It says albums. Now down below, the very bottom down here, uh, get out here, the very bottom, you'll see albums. You see library, which is everything. And this is free. I mean, it's amazing what you could do with this. But albums is so important. Recent. And, and uh, that's, that's the latest things that I've been doing right now. Go back to that. Halloween things here already. Oh, my gosh. Uh, favorites. And this is where I put in some of the things that, that and I don't want to take a lot of time with this, but this is where you can put your favorites and you can take any picture and put a, a hit the, hit the, um, the heart and it goes into this favorite album. And I use it for showing various different things, techniques, how to get your panoramics to be flat and straight. Um, here's the Avenue of Oaks down by Southern Georgia, the Golden Isles, Jekyll. And, and, and here's an iris on our daughter's farm. Of course, it's been affected because the background, the greenery, was so bright and distracting, I was able to select it and actually make it out of focus and darkness so that iris comes forward. Campfires and uh, where I teach up in Door County, people gather at night and for the sunsets and, and campfires. Here's just a, a tulip. Uh, wasi Saba, Sabi, and I'm pronouncing it probably incorrect in a Japanese term, for beauty in especially nature that isn't perfect. Beauty and imperfection. And this was a, a, a tulip that fell apart, and I tried to make something of beauty out of it. Here, I put a moment macro lens. It's a 30 times macro. It's kind of hard to use. It's so big. And that's a, 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 a stem, a prairie grass, native prairie grass in central United States called little blue stem in the rain. Here's playing with toys. I gave the secret away. I call it out of Africa. And that's a dollar store giraffe and a dollar store elephant and a, and a weed stuck in a pile of grass and a, and a sunset behind it. Here's another toy. And you can have fun with these toys and give them to your neighbors or grandchildren, great grandchildren. And, and but, you know, just a, a little dollar store toy. Intentional camera movement. Been around for a long time. Somebody that really started it big time is Tony Sweet. And um, I, I, I'm going to be doing a whole program this next spring in Lake Forest, Illinois, on intentional camera movement. Big, big cameras, cell phones. Here's crystal balls. You can buy these. Kind of fun. Here's a, a, an old prison in the rain. Yes, I added the lightning. You can, you can get lightning. Uh, I have some sources of lightning strikes. And here's a prison. Uh, now, you, you Canadians didn't watch probably the Bruce Brothers movie, did you? Well, no. No. Okay, that's where Jake came out of the prison. And another thing is, is just uh, taking a slow shutter speed, that's an application, and swiping in a sunset. That's kind of fun. Intentional camera movement. Now, remember I showed you uh, when we're setting at the top of your cameras, and many of your iPhones have this live photo. It's about a second to a second and a half. It's wonderful for waterfalls. But here, 
It was an elevated train in Chicago. It was gonna, I knew it was going to go by me. I stood perfectly still, leaned against the post, and went click, 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 click until it went by. And then I picked out the one that was the best. And you can capture that movement. Um, it, it's, it, I really use it for waterfalls. But when you've got something that's going to move, like a dog running around a tree or something, it's kind of fun. Here, here's video. And this is a, a Scandinavian thing up in Door County. I say that because it's, I think they started it. It's called a fish boil. And what I do when I know there's something that's going to move and I, can, I know what's going to happen, I will take a video of it. Maybe a, a five second, 10 second video, a video clip. And I'll show you what happens. I'll click right here. And we'll, see, we'll see the video go. And I want, I want to, uh, not yet. There, maybe right there. I want to catch that just when the, the, the boil master is still in the picture and that flame is coming up. And they use that to, to uh, burn off with kerosene, burn off the fish oil. So you can use that, you can use videos and you'll have a high quality if you set your, your phone right to actually do some of those videos. Now I put this one in and it is not corrected. If you look at the right side, you'll see the skyscraper bent. I have not done any correction. But when you get the right light and the right clouds, you see what you can get? This is, I was on top of a, of a hotel building. I got permission to go out on the deck and look down the Chicago River. And I can think I can count seven or eight bridges here. They're closed now, but when they let the sailboats to go out to Lake Michigan, they raise them up. The Carn Cobs, as we call them, the Marina Towers there, a pretty well-known uh, private place for uh, residents and so forth. It's, it's an interesting uh, shot. On Excuse top me, of Jerry. Yeah. Uh, you, you had asked me to give you a 10-minute warning when our break is coming up, and that's now. The, okay. So if you could just time it, please. Thanks. Okay, um, so I'll just close this off here. Here's doing a panoramic, but then moving the camera while you do it. Here's some architecture, uh, looking up the stairs. And here is one of my first infrareds, garbage day, <laughs> garbage pickup day, infrared on the iPhone. Okay, um, Richard, uh, explain to me now what we're doing here. Well, just before the break, we did have a question from the chat room. In terms of shooting video, are you saying you shoot a five second video and then select the best frame as your still image? Yes, and it's in the, it's in the notes and uh, the application is called video and then the number two photo. And you can put, oh, you could have a 15 second clip, but boy, you have so many. But every little frame you can, and you can select just that frame for that decisive moment that you wanted to collect. And it's a higher quality than pushing down and going, you know, whenever you do that a burst, they're not as high a quality. They're not. But, the, but if you set your video to the highest quality that you can, you can end up with a, a very high quality still. Uh, you have a puppy dog and then it keeps moving the head. You want to want to facing you. Bangle, you nail it. As a follow-up, uh, would this be for any mo mobile phone or just the iPhone 11? Any iPhone, and I, I don't. I think there may be an application for Android. I'm not sure, but this this goes back to iPhone 5, 4, 5. Yeah, set the video as good as you can, and then capture a video, and use video two photos. It's in the notes. Thank you. Uh, say it once again. Uh, Daphne, if you want to unmute yourself, you can ask your question in person. Sure. Um, Jerry, you were talking about using the AEAF lock, and I just missed how you how you actually got that, because unless it's just on your 11 phone, I don't know how to find it. I only have a six. So is that something that's just on the 11? 
Oh, no, it's on the six, it's on the five, it's on the four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you find that AEAF lock? Okay, you're ready. You said you pressed something, but I didn't. Okay, you're ready to take a picture. And whatever you want to focus on, there's a, so a bag of junk I'm giving away. I'm putting my finger on that bag of junk and holding it right there. And then what happens, oh, okay. that yellow box will come up. Then I can take my finger off. Now, if I move closer back, I touch the screen and I have to refocus, put it on, lock. Now I can also move my finger up and down, get the correct exposure, and take the picture. So it's kind of like manual, uh, manual control of focus and exposure. Uh -huh. okay. Thank you. And, and the uh, other thing you mentioned just after that was about when you um, use your fingers to kind of get a telephoto. You were talking about, you know, if you came across a loon or something and it was a long way off and you can... Oh, okay, okay. So you can uh, make it go into a zoom function, but you said uh, you don't want to use the optical zoom, and I didn't. And then we kind of got into using albums, so okay. I didn't quite yeah. get what yeah. you were you saying. Want to use optical zoom whenever you can and not digital. When you take two fingers and pull them apart to zoom in, you know, sometimes um, you may have to do it. You're at the edge of the water. And you, and you can't reach any further, you don't have uh, in your particular uh, phone, you don't have a telephoto or a telephoto lens you can add on, you'll have to do it. But it's, it's, it's cropping. And actually, I would try it two ways. One, take the picture as is, and then crop the photo later. Mm -hmm. Whenever you crop a photo, there is a little degradation. But when you do this, this digital crop, see, you're now, now you're not using optics. You, you've gone beyond the optic reach of your lens. And so avoid that. I tell people also, if you're going to take a picture, rather than doing that, zoom with your feet, walk closer. Of course, if you're at the edge of the water, <laughs> and you got your Sunday best on, you know, you, you're stuck, right? Okay. Great, thank you. Oh, yes. Any more questions? Yeah, I've got a, a question about the same topic. So instead of taking your fingers and zooming in, if you click on, let's say two, which is using the telephoto lens, is that a better option? Oh, yes, oh, yes. Okay, that, that, I didn't understand if, if you... If you yeah, 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 don't misunderstand me. Because if, so clicking on two is a better option to give you quality. Oh, yes, because that is glass. That's glass there. And, and, and that's why you want a phone that has a, has a second lens. Yes. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that, Stephen. Jerry, there's one other question from the chat room. Could you explain the difference again between optical and digital zoom? Yes. Optical is using the lenses provided, our lenses. Digital is when you're going beyond the reach. Now, for instance, if I hold down my finger when I'm selecting, here, let me get out of this here. If, if, if I'm selecting a, a lens and I hold my finger down, I have the option of using a dial. It, it's, all that is, is, is not using the finger. But if I know that I don't go beyond two and I don't go beyond down here, within that reach, I'm still somewhere within the optical range. And so that's zooming within one of the one of the lenses range within. Um, not everybody gets into that, but that's basically what it is. And I have three lenses. So I anything within that range, I'm using the glass. But going beyond that, now you're into digital and now you're cropping. Okay. 
You know, as photographers, you know, Ansel Adams, and I've been in Ansel's home after he passed, but Virginia, his wife and, and maid left us in and, and I was in with one of Ansel's assistants, John Sexton, at the time I was a large format photographer. And um, uh, one of Sexton's um, things was good photos are made, not taken. And people say, oh, you mess with that photo. You mess with that photo. No, that's not real. Well, um, it's reality as you want it. And we're not, you know, a, a photojournalist is not supposed to mess around with photos. He's supposed to just take the picture and then show it. PJ is it called, photojournalism. But you're welcome to do whatever you want to with it, what pleases you. And it's not the judge it's you, what you like doing. I want to emphasize that. I mean, this is very important. Um, we're going to work with Snapseed, first of all. And so I'm going to open Snapseed right now. I'll click on it. And this is what I get. And uh, of course, what's going to happen, you can tap open up here or you can tap anywhere to open a photo. So I'll tap open. And then I'm going to open from device. And then I'm going to go to albums. Very important. And let's see. Best doubles. I'm just sitting right here. Yeah, best. I got all kind of albums here. And I've got one called best demos. And that's where I'm keeping the, um, the ones for this, this program before and after. Best demos. And there's the picture we're going to start with. Whoa. <laughs> picture of one of my former students. And um, yeah, it, it's a problem, isn't it? Okay. And then up there in the upper right corner, it says use. Now, this is pretty much on the Android our iPhones pretty much the same. So now I have the picture in here and try it and not get ahead of me. And some of you are very advanced and you've used a lot of this, but um, if you get ahead, then you may get lost and I'll, I'll have to spend a lot of time. Probably as workflow, I always consider one thing first, very important. Now I'm looking at the base of those two skyscrapers on the left and in the center, sort of center. And I can see that those skyscrapers are crooked. And so the normal thing would be to find the tool that says rotate. Now we're only going to use about five or six tools. There's 28 tools. We don't have time for all of those. And there's tutorials. If I click up here in the three dots, that takes us to tutorials. Now, as I said, don't rotate. Go to tools down below. And when you straighten something out, I want you to use perspective. It's in the second row, the second one over, perspective. See that? Click on perspective. Now, under perspective, there's tilt, rotate, scale, free. For this one, we're going to use rotate and you click on rotate and then I'm going to put my finger and just move from left to right. And then I'm going to line up on those two skyscrapers where I can get just the edge is perfectly straight. Now, I haven't taken my finger off yet. Look at the very bottom. You see that black spot down there? The black line? See the upper right corner? I'm going to take my finger straight off. If I move it, I'll lose it. My finger straight off. And it's filled in with content to wear, just like Photoshop. That's what you want to do. You don't, it's so much better, so much better. Now, I'm talking, and I didn't get mine that straight. So I'm going to go back here again, rotate, and I'm talking, and, and go ahead straight now. There, now I got it. 
because I, I, I wasn't lifting straight off. Now what I have to do, I have to go to the bottom right corner. This isn't saving it, it's just locking it in and lock it in. Okay, now you know you've locked it in when it says tools, looks, and so forth. So now if I touch, when I see the three things in the bottom, if I touch the picture, you can see where you started. That's all we've done. We've done one step. So we have one layer to be pre present here. Now, the next thing, now you may have a different idea about editing than I, but just, just go along with me for right now. And so I can walk everybody through the tools. I'm gonna to go to tools again. And now I'm going to go to crop, which is in the upper right corner. You had to click on tools and I'll click on crop. And then I have all these different choices. I want you to click on the far right one, which says free, so it's blue, okay? Now, if you were doing, if you were a scrapbooker, you probably want everything three, two, or that's a, a four by six or six by four, but we're not. And so I, I clicked on that. Now I'm, I'm going to touch the screen so that goes away and it's out of the way. And I don't need all that negative space on the bottom. I'm going to get rid of a lot of it. It's a mess. And I'm just going to crop and just pull on up and take quite a bit of that off. And then release my finger. And then at the top, I'm going to pull down. I'm going to put my finger in the center. I'm pulling down. I don't want to get too close to the top of the skyscrapers. I want to give a little room up there. That means I don't have all of that taken off there, but that we'll deal with that. And you, you could change it. Don't go by the corners, go by the center of the spot that you're cropping in. And I could crop in a little bit on the left side, maybe, but I don't have to, but whatever you want to do there. Now, I've cropped it, so then again, I have to go down to the bottom corner, check mark, lock it in, okay? Now, obviously, what bothers our eye the most is that black spot in the corner. Go to tools again, and go down to the third row, healing. That's a spot healing tool. I'm gonna touch it. Now, this is not a clone tool. This is like a spot healing tool. And I'll just start putting my finger on and rubbing it. And if you rub too much, you can always, there's a back arrow here. See that little thing right there, the bottom? You can go step at a step back if you want to do that. Okay. Now, I'm satisfied. I, I'm maybe, I don't think I'm too close to, to the skyscrapers, but I'm, I'm pretty close. And so I'm going to. Hit the check mark over here again, lock it in. Whoop, lock it in. Okay, so now we haven't, we've only done a couple things, but we've already improved it. In fact, we can take our finger and as long as you have those down there and put, put it on it, you can see where we've been. Okay, touch, this, touch the picture, take your finger off. That's where we've been. Now, we're gonna to go to a tool, and I want you to look at the sky. And this is in Photoshop, this is in Lightroom, this is in uh, this wonderful, uh, this used to be a Nick filter, but Google kept it and they give it away free, and it's wonderful. Go to tools. Now we're gonna to go to the very first one here called Tune Image. Click on it. And now if I move my finger up and down, these are all the parameters that I can do. And let me tell you what I'm gonna do. It, it, the default is brightness. I'm not gonna brighten it up right now, but you can later if you wanna try this on your own. But I want you to go, go down to the one, move your finger and stop on the one and release where it says highlights. Whenever you have a bright midday picture like this with beautiful clouds and you want the clouds to show up better, 
take the highlights and pull them down. In other words, take your finger on the um, somewhere up here and pull from right to left. You want to picture it and pull from right to left. You don't want to go the, the wrong way, but pull it down until you like it. Yeah, you know, I, I don't go by numbers. Mine's around 70 probably, and I'll let go. And I, I can just, because I haven't checked it yet, I can just check it myself by touching the picture. And I think, well, that's okay. Well, I can go down a little bit more maybe, or, or less. But that's, that's close enough. And then I lock it in. Now, this is a great way to bring out your skies. And you're not changing the re realistic part of the sky. You just put the emphasis on the right syllable, <laughs> as the English teacher would say. But I want to emphasize that sky a little bit. Now, so far, so good. We're not going to do too much more with this, but I, but I'm again, I'm emphasizing. Take your time, and this is all in the notes, by the way. And especially remember, if it, if your image is crooked, left or right, if you've got, you know, the Pacific Ocean going uphill, <laughs> you know, it ain't straight, baby. And I have that problem sometimes. Another reason for having the grid turned on, the tit-tat-toe game turned on, so you have a line there. Don't crop. Because if you crop first and then it's crooked, you're going to crop again. Always do that straightening first and then crop if you need to. That's. Do you have to do it that way? No, but it just makes sense because why double crop? And then you crop too much and you're going to go back to the beginning. Now, I want to do one more thing here, and I'm going to take my time so you follow me. This is everybody. I want to sharpen those buildings, but not the sky. If you sharpen the sky, and that's a problem with, with the Apple tools. When, when you sharpen it, it sharpens everything. You don't want to sharpen the sky. That's unnatural. Or water. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to tools. And the second one is details. And I click details. And details only contains two things, structure and sharpening. What is structure? Well, it's an old Nick filter, and that's what Nick called it. It's clarity on Photoshop, Photoshop elements, it's clarity. That's all it is. Mid-tone contrast. And so I'll take my finger and go from left to right, and I'll give it a little structure. I won't go too much. But now I gave structure to the sky, but we'll take care of that in a minute. Now I'm going to take my finger up and I'll go to sharpening. I don't want to over-sharpen, so I'll maybe, I'll maybe go up to 20, not too much more. You have to be careful with sharpening if you want it super realistic. Now, I have sharpened the whole thing. I don't want that. So I have to lock it in down below down here. And now that I've locked it in, right up here, you see that stack in that curved line. They call it the stack. Click on it. And then you get this thing here. It says view edits. Click on it. View edits. And guess what? There's the stack. That's not a stack. That's layers, baby. <laughs> I can't get away from Photoshop entirely. I call them layers. And the one that's causing the problem now, if you blew it up real big, is details because I sharpened the sky and gave more structure to the sky. So there's a little carrot here, a little carrot. See that thing sticking to the left? Touch that carrot. Now this is a little different 
but you'll catch on to this real fast. And there's a tutorial that's different than what I'm showing you, but it's the same thing. So I click on the paintbrush. Okay. Now I'm going to use my, my electronic stylus. I may, may have this in my notes too, I'm not sure. But you can get it for the, the iPhone. It's on sale now for $19 on eBay. Plus $29. I paid $30 for it. And I'm going to start painting just on the buildings. Now, there's a little overlap. A little won't hurt because there's a fade on it. And so I'll start working on these buildings here. Use your finger. The building's over here. And a building here. Maybe a little bit of a building here. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh my goodness, I went too far. Okay, down below, down below it says 100% details. Click the down arrow. You go all the way down to zero. You go down to zero, and then you can go back here and rub there and take that out. A little overlap won't hurt. Okay, now I will lock that in. Now I've got, I've un sharpened the sky. Well, what do we call that in Photoshop? Layer masking. That's what they call in Photoshop, layer masking. Can you believe this on the iPhone? This is one of the hidden things that some people don't, don't look at, but it's wonderful. Uh, you can also have a color picture and take the color away from just certain things, make it black and white, but keep the color in. Same way you do this. Now, let me say this again. How do we get rid of the stack? Up here in the upper right corner, right there, that is where we get out of that stack. We're back ready to, to do some more. So now there are some other things we could do. I look at tools here. Um, and, you know, we could touch escape. Oh, overkill, you know, uh, that's a fake HDR. But you, you could come back on it, I guess, or if you wanted to. But uh, it's kind of overkill. So how do we get out of that? I don't want to use it. Down the bottom, on the right, there's a check mark. Now you're out of it. But you, you can try some different things. There's another tool, and one is called Glamour Glow. Well, sometimes this is pretty nice, especially on portraits of, 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 of people that may have a wrinkle, but not here. So I'll hit the, the uh, check mark, uh, the X mark down here and get out of that. So there's more things you can play with. Now, the last thing I'm going to do with this is export it. And this is, this is be careful. Don't, don't get in a hurry here. Um, it could be that on the Androids, it does not, it just says save. But for some reason on the, I, on the I, uh, iPhone, it says save as a copy. The changes you can undo. That means it will not affect the original, your negative. And number two, by saving as a copy, you can go back in a day later and open it up again. And those, those um, edits that you had there are still there and just change one you didn't like. So very important. And this is in the notes also, if you forget, save a copy. Save a copy. And so now I have saved a copy of that. But you still need to have that original someplace, especially if you're going to play with it. Okay. Now, I'm going through, I don't want to rush. And, you know, as we, as we go through some of these things, uh, because there'll be some more questions at the end, I want to kind of keep us moving just a little bit.
if you don't mind, and go to the other image, okay? And we're going to go to the other image for two things. One? Excuse me, Jerry, before you yeah. go any further, uh, one quick question. Someone asked, where is the copy saved? The copy is saved to your, your album. So in other words, if, if I, if I um, get out of this and I go to my photos and I go to the, the recents in my album, there it is. That's where the copy is. Okay? And it's usually the last picture on the iPhone. It's usually the last picture where it shows up. Thank you. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back. And then I'm going to go over here to, to this here. And I'm going to go to touch. Of course, it's called retouch. I think uh, sometimes in, in the app store, it's called Touch, retouch, but it's retouch. And this is one right here. And we'll touch it. And now we're going to go to our album for that other picture of the barn. Albums. Okay. And I'm going to go back to favorites, panoramic. I'm going to go into the one that I've got in the set here. And after. Okay. This is the barn. Now, I picked this image because we're going to work on it in both touch retouch, a retouch, and we're going to go back to. Um, to our other, our other um, Snapseed, app jumping, we call it. And you see at the bottom down here, it says clone stamp, line removal, quick repair, object removal, and there's more. But I'm gonna click, uh, click line removal to get started here. I'll click on it. And then after I click on it, I see segment removal. And over here, it says settings. I'll click on settings. And it says thin, medium, or thick. Well, that heavy line that's up there in the right corner, I'm going to say that's medium. So I'll click on and touch medium. And then I'm going to touch that thing. And I push down kind of hard with my finger. And is that nice or is that nice? Now, if, if, if you're, you can also rub it, but I, I, I want to push down on it so my finger gets on both sides of it. I didn't have to rub up and down on it to do it, okay? And not bad, huh? Not bad. Now, um, so I'm going to go back here. That was the line remover. I'm going to go back here, and it says object removal. Notice that when I took this picture of this old barn and where they used to keep the cattle there, probably, there was a barn, a barn walk. Well, you drive around in, in, in uh, Western Illinois and we went through 11 barns in one day. Sounds exciting, but it was, it was exciting. But I'm just gonna take my finger over here and rub right there on that building on the side I'll, I'll use object removal. And then it, I've pretty well selected all of it. Hit, hit, I have to hit the word go here. Go. Pretty nice, huh? Whoa. It's, it, it, it's these two factors. And you can also lasso things. You can brush things. You can use an eraser tool. But the clone tool is really important. Now, Jerry, what was that little window that opened when you did that? Um, there was well, a small window. Oh, you mean down here? Or just if you do that again, can you reverse, sure. reverse it? Um, let's see. Put the I... object back. There. Did you see that little window that opened there? 
It looks like it's a magnet. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's where you can follow it. Uh-huh. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that kind of neat? It's like a, like a transporter thing there. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's a quick brush down here. There's uh, blemishes, blemish remover. You remove blemishes and different things. But I never just tried blemish remover, but. That, that doesn't work. Quick repair sometimes. Just took a little spot off there. But now what I want to do, I want to save this. And of course, saving it, go to the upper, right up here, that little box with the outside. Hit that. It says save as copy. Save as a copy. And said it was saved. Okay, now we get out of this application. And by the way, you notice I keep many of the applications that I use a lot for editing right on the front page of my. I'm a photographer, so right here, these are some of the applications that I use to teach at the clearing in Wisconsin. Different ones plus these here. View ed, uh, exit, that's where your metadata, distress FX, Lightroom, um, so forth. But now I'm gonna go back to Snapseed. Now, we finished this, but we didn't close it out. So we have to hit up at the top up here, open. Hit open, okay. Open from device, and if we go to albums, there's the last picture that we did. That's the last one. So select it, go down there, and now we've got this, and it says use, oh, use. And now we've got this application, and we're back in Snapseed, and there's a couple different tools here. We can straighten out that silo is leaning to me. But I'm more important right now, I want to, I want to, um, I know that silo is not wood. I think it's, it's ceramic blocks. So I'll hit tools. And in the second row, there's one called selective. You see that? Selective. Hit selective. This is a powerful tool. Now down below, the, to do something with it, you have to have one of these that shows blue. And if it shows blue, I'm gonna put my finger in the center of that, someplace in the, near the center of that silo. And now I'm gonna take my fingers and stretch out well, that covers almost too much. So then I'll pull my fingers in and you can see a circle because I just want to, I just want to hit the silo. You see me do that with my fingers? Mm -hmm. you get a circle, just pinch them in and out. If you get a little part of the barn, it's okay. Now what's it doing? It's selecting color and texture. Okay, now B, Stands for brightness. I'll take my finger from the bottom. You have contrast, saturation, and structure. So I'm going to take the top one that says brightness. I'll take my finger from the left to right down below. And look what's happening. All of a sudden, I can start to see a little detail in that silo. Now that was that was brightness. And I'm going to go hit saturation a little bit. I'll hit structure, which is kind of sharpens it up a little bit. Oh, yeah. And so now I can see some rings on the silo. Okay, now I'll lock that in. The check mark on the right. Okay. Now let's, let's do the, the barn itself, the siding in the barn. Go to tools. Go to selective, 
Well, let's touch that red part of the bar in there. Take our fingers. Oops. And see if we can't kind of spread it out a little bit. And even if it goes over a little part of the silo, and then I'm going to brighten it up. And so we're now getting some, some features there purely by color and texture. I'm going to lock it in. And now that dirty concrete down there uh, where the cattle used to stand years ago when they had cattle, they're now far grain farmers. Hit tools again. I'll hit selective. And touch it. I'm just going to select that, pretty much that. And I'll darken that. I'll, I'll, I'll pull that down a little bit so it doesn't, so our eye doesn't go right there. Is it? Now, here's another thing I do. I'll touch that, that B, touch it. It says copy. Hit copy. And there's one little spot right over here that probably is still too hot. So I'll touch that little spot right there. Paste. And I'll take that down a little bit. Lock it in. And that pretty well took care of that. So you, you see what I'm playing with here? I'm playing. But this is kind of what it's all about. I could take the sky, and I replace skies, but we won't get into that in this, this workshop here. But I could darken the sky, I could lighten it. For instance, I noticed that where the wires, there's some little wires here, we could we can mess with those too, that it's a lighter sky, it's lighter over here. We could balance that out. Well, there's another way to do things like that. I'll go to tools. And right next to where we had selected was a brush tool. I'll select a brush. And this says dodge and burn. Well, 10 plus means that's going to be brighter. So if I go the arrow down, that's, that would be 5 plus or erase the next one down. Come on. Oh, my, my mind is acting up here. But anyway, I don't want to erase. Hmm. Okay, well, let, let's say if I wanted to darken something, <laughs> brighten something up. Um, I could brighten up that silo just by rubbing my finger over it. I don't know why it's not doing it here. Oh, there it is, minus five. And so I got a minus five. I can come over here in that area where I've got this down here and I could darken that sky a little bit. I don't like that. Do a little bit here, it's sensitive. I could darken a little bit right here. And this little this little thing right down here, this shows you, if I turn it on, it shows you where I've worked. I turned it off because it kind of gets in the way. And then you lock this in. So now we've used a few more tools that I didn't use before. Now there's still some power lines, real thin ones over here I could take out. I could straighten the, the silo and, um, and straighten that up a little bit. And sometimes that's an interesting one to try, perspective. And this one, I would go to free perspective and then I would just pull the upper right here, pull it just a little bit. And over here, I could, I, I'm still in free. And I could pull the roof of that barn down just a little bit. And so I can, I can actually Straighten to uh, straighten, uh, uh, you know, the, the perspective that I got off and then lock it in. And I could have done the first thing, but but uh, I wasn't not going to crop those pictures, so I kind of skipped that my own rule. So, and then you, of course, ex ex 
export it, save as a copy. It means you have the original. Now, Androids may not have it. That's one thing that is different there on Androids. It may not say save as a copy, but uh, it does save it as a copy. It really does. Now, th this is interesting. And the eye there, that kind of tells you where it was. Uh, the date I took it, no, the, no, it wasn't the date, the date I, I uh, actually edited it. But it, it shows you uh, where the barn was. It says Lake Erie. I don't know about that, but anyway. Okay, now I want to show you, and our time is kind of kind of pumping right along here. I want to show you a couple other things. And so let's get out of this for right now. I just want to show you, there was a camera plus, but you want camera plus two. This is pro camera, not pro cam, pro camera. This is the one that has the most wonderful high dynamic range. Now I have more because you can see there's dots under here. So I've got more in here. Quick shot. That's why I have all kind of skies. I can drive. That was a blank sky there. Well, let's try it. Let's try a quick shot. Let's see if it works. Access to all my photos, of course. Okay. I need to do that. And I'll go into this photo right here. Let's see, let's see if it works. And it says, look, sky. Let's try this one right here. Whoa. That's cheating. <laughs> I mean, I'm showing you some of the apps that is in the long list of apps. But isn't that interesting? And I could change, I could, sometimes I can even change it, move it around. Different kind of a sky. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's really kind of interesting. Okay. And these are some of the, there's a night mode here for some of your older phones. This is where you can do nighttime type of things. Or you've got to be on a tripod though. You've got to hold that thing still. And these are some fancy things here. Circular. Deception. That is a wild thing. Um, th these are different things. And then here, some apps that, I, I, uh, that I'm using right now. Photocopier is an interesting one. And they have all the old masters, black and white people, and how they tinted things. And, and they have in the archives. And you can use the tint that, that various different photographers, historical photographers did. Uh, Distress FX, the newest one is not that. It's just Distress FX Plus. There's now a newer one. And these are, these are all different kind of textures you can add to your photos. And um, you can add birds. You know, you can, you can add all kinds of things. Um, but it, it, it's, it's a fun, I don't worry about white skies anymore because I can drop in a texture. And that's what I do. I really do. We've had a couple more questions, uh, Jerry. Good time. Uh, the first one is asking uh, about all of these apps. Is there uh, a listing in your notes that we'll be receiving? That is correct. Popular ones? That is correct. Okay. And why uh, the app and why the app? Okay. The second one was, uh, would you share with us the uh, a brand name of the stylus you got from eBay? Um. Let me do this. Let me send. Uh, let me send the link to it. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, it, it's uh, 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 not off of eBay, but off of Amazon. Ah, okay. And I'll send it because it was thirty dollars. It's now nineteen dollars, and it, it's it's really kind of neat, especially on the iPhone or an older iPad. You know, that that's not the Pro. Okay. And it works on uh, 
I think it works on Androids. It, yeah, it works on Androids also. And it may work on Chromebooks. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. Anyway, okay, you got another question. Jerry, um, earlier you showed uh, a photo that was taken at the train station where you had this great blurred image of the train uh, disappearing. Could you tell us how that was done? Uh-huh, yes. Now, there are instructions on live photo. If you go to the uh, Apple, um, the Apple site and put in live photo, it'll show you exactly what to do. But basically, if I go up here and um, I turn on live photo, now it's turned on. And um, Graham, you're sitting there. Do you have a cup of coffee with you or a, a glass of water? No, nope, sorry. Okay, well, okay. got a pen. <laughs> okay, got a pen. Okay, uh, raise the pen up and down. You just keep raising that pen up and down. Yeah, keep moving. Okay. Okay, stop. Now, I took that. Let's see if it shows up here. And then, after taking that picture, it will say right up in here, live. See that? Mm -hmm. So I'll touch that live. Okay, and then I'll push up to the bottom down here. And it says loop. And see what it's doing on loop? Mm -hmm. It just keeps looping. And bounce, it just keeps bouncing. And then the last one is long exposure. That's the one I use for waterfalls. Because then it makes that thing. Now then, after you do that, be sure and turn it off. Or all your pictures are going to have a little jerk at the beginning of the picture. Okay. Now this is kind of a, you're still looping there. See it? <laughs> you can have somebody that drinks a lot of coffee and then you're just drinking the coffee, you're drinking the coffee. Another question, Jerry, uh, from the yeah. chat room. What is your favorite app to denoise an image? Oh, yes. Well, that's a trade-off right now. And actually, in the original editing, when you, when you take a picture, I take a picture right here. Okay. Oh, I got to turn that thing off. Well, take a picture. And then I go to the picture here, and, it's a, and I go to edit. Mine's in the bottom, could be in the top. I go almost near the end and we'll say sharpness, definition, noise reduction. See that? And you can actually do it here. Um, and, and do nothing else, just noise reduction there. In the Lightroom mobile, right here, this has also uh, in the instructions, and here, here's the camera for it, and you can change the ISO, you can change the exposure, white balance, on and on and on and on and on and on. And what lens you're using, telephoto, ultra wide, so forth. By the way, if I set this to take raw, the ultra wide, wide will drop the raw and only do, and, and this is in the 11, and we'll only do um, JPEG. Why raw? Because you can do a lot of editing, non-destructive, and then maybe just tweak it in Lightroom. I mean, in, in Snaps, Snapseed, a couple little things are so easy to use. And you have non-destructive and Snapseed will, by the way, edit raw also. So this is another place. And there, there's another app. I'll see, see if I have it in here anymore. Um, uh, don't see it. 
no. There's a final question has come in, uh, Jerry, regarding other lenses. You, know, you kind of mentioned that at the beginning. I wonder if you could talk about uh, the additional lenses that you can use with your mobile phone. Um, being photographers, I don't care if you're a beginner or what level your photography is. I would not waste money on all these different brands that are out there. Because every time you buy a new phone, then you have to buy a new set of those lenses because they don't fit. I would only buy the moment lens. You don't have to go to eBay, go right to the website moment. It's shocking. The, the lens itself, it's like, it's like having Zeiss, Zeiss glass. They're a little heavy, but it's wonderful glass. They have a wide angle, which is wider than, than your, your normal lens. They have a telephoto, which you can put top of your telephoto, so you have four times. They have a fisheye. They have a macro, which is uh, a 30 times macro. And that's a little hard to use because you can't do anything else but 30 times. It's really, really close up. But the moment lens, and this is in the notes, check it out. Thank you. And, and you have to have a moment case. So if you buy a new phone, like probably now for my 12 Pro Max in December when I get it or whatever, uh, I will buy a new case for $39. And that's all. And so I can keep using those lenses on and on and on. 